our first Ori in today of 2023. I'm Joe Johnson. I'm joined by Tracy Woodrum. Hello and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What's the statute of limitations on saying Happy New Year? It's the 17th. I think we can so, get away with it I for think a little while. I think we're good. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so welcome. We got a full show today. A little bit later, we're going to welcome guests uh, representing Ori and Oxford Fish. Uh, we're going to be talking about the upcoming ONTV Food Drive and uh, lots of events and exciting things happening in Lake Orion that uh, will be coming up over the next few weeks and things that have happened uh, recently. Um, one thing we want to uh, get word out uh, about is this weekend, uh, the 20th, that's this Friday and the 21st, Oakland County is uh, bringing back its Fire and Ice Festival. Ah. And uh, they took two years off because of uh, COVID restrictions, so they weren't able to do it. Uh, but it is returning this uh, this Friday. Uh, they had a press conference recently to announce everything that people can expect. Uh, the, it gets its name, Fire and Ice, from the fireworks show that they're going to have on both Friday and Saturday. Nice. Uh, there's going to be live ice carving and ice sculptures all over downtown. They're going to leave the, uh, the big bright light show on. They usually extend that through January to... Uh, correspond with the festival. Have you been down downtown Rochester for the big bright light show? I have, yes. It's spectacular. It is, it? it is. I actually was able to make it down on a warmer day, so it was nice to walk around as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so lots of things, ice skating, yeah. um, sledding last time I was there. I don't know if they're going to have it again this year, but I know they had sledding last time. Uh, and there's a uh, fundraiser, spaghetti dinner fundraiser. Last time I was there, it was at the fire station downtown. Um, so lots of activities, lots of things going on in downtown uh, Rochester. Even though it's hosted in downtown Rochester, it's an Oakland County event. Uh, L. Brooks Patterson, the late L. Brooks Patterson, kicked that mm -hmm. off uh, about a dozen years ago or so. Um, and uh, we go, go down there every once in a while and shoot video. You can see that playing on the screen right now. And uh, Now, I'm not a big winter guy. I would prefer <laughs> to uh, lay on my couch under a comforter and watch football. But uh, <laughs> they want you to get out there and enjoy winter and celebrate everything this state has to offer. So. Uh, so that's a big deal. There's uh, the former county executive and uh, there's the fireworks. Um, something about fireworks in the winter, they just seem that much more vibrant. I don't know what it is, if it's the cold or what, but uh, yeah. yeah, lots yeah. going on. Oh, that'll be nice. And you know what? The weather has been a little bit nicer, so yeah. it hasn't been too bitter cold, so it should be a, a nice weekend for it. Yeah, and hopefully so. it won't be too warm because they want to be able to do the ice skating and stuff like that. But yeah. it looks like it's going to be, be right in the mid-30s. Yeah, yes. yeah, it yeah, should yeah. be all right. It should be pleasant. <laughs> um, and then uh, coming up at the beginning of the month is Ice Fest, not to be confused with the Fire and Ice Festival. Um, that is a cooperative effort between Lake Orion and downtown Oxford. Uh, I think the first year that they did it was last year. Uh, they had a trolley that shuttled people back and forth between Oxford and Lake Orion. Uh, that's been actually running just about all year. It, yes, it um, has, yeah. So that's been really neat. And again, you'll see ice carvings all over Lake Orion in, in downtown Oxford. And uh, there'll be live ice carving yeah. starting Thursday, February 2nd. Um, in downtown Lake Orion, you'll uh, you'll see uh, what Clint Rich of Clear Cut Ice Sculptures uh, will be downtown every Thursday carving ice. So bring the kids down and yeah. uh, check out the ice carving. Uh, you see some examples there on the screen. It's really something to see. And that, of course, is uh, dependent on cold weather because we don't want those ice carvings melting away. <laughs> right, right. Yes, last year they lasted for a little while. I, I know my son and I, we were able to walk down and, and watch as the the ice carvings were done. It's it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. And speaking of the DDA, uh, they also asked me to promote the fact that they have a photography contest going right now, and they're asking people to post photos of downtown Lake Orion on their social media, Instagram, Facebook, and they want you to add this hashtag to your post. You can either do hashtag local lens, L-O-C-A-L-L-E-N-S, uh, or hashtag local lens 2023, or hashtag experience Lake Orion. So when I found out about it, I figured, well, I have some nice photos of downtown Lake yeah. Orion. So I uploaded it to my Instagram account. I used the tags, and guess what? I won oh. for week two. You can see some oh. of the 
photos wow, on the screen there. Congratulations. Beautiful. That was a couple of years ago. It caught this beautiful sunset uh, over the lake. Um, that was yeah. from uh, that new building in downtown Lake Orion on Flint Street when they had an open house there. Okay. Um, and that is from the Ferris wheel of Jubilee. Wow. And uh, I, I kind of messed around with a little trick there uh, called tilt shift photography where you make things look like miniature if you shoot high and okay. shoot down a, from a high vantage point. Um, so yeah, so whenever I'm downtown Lake Orion shooting video, I usually pull out my phone and take a couple of photos. So I figured, ah, oh, what the heck, that's I'll great. throw some on Instagram. And oh, that's from our, our uh, uh, lighted boat parade a number of years ago. And that particular uh, float there was destroyed in that tornado that blew through oh. Lake Orion a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, the Chinese dragon that you see there, every year dragon that comes boat. out for dragon on the lake. Mm -hmm. So if you have photos of downtown Lake Orion, uh, post them on your, on your social media. Use those hashtags that I mentioned, and uh, maybe you can win. I don't know what I've won yet. i got to find <laughs> out what the prize is. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's some gift cards or something for downtown Lake Orion. That so, would be great. So I just yeah. found that out just before you went live on the air, so that was a nice surprise. Congratulations, so, yes. Something else we want to promote, um, even though it's not necessarily open to the public, this Friday, but Meyer, the new Meyer store that mm -hmm. uh, is just about wrapping up construction on M24, they're gonna have a little sneak peek open house this Friday, dignitaries and media are invited. There's gonna be a check presentation and everything uh, at Meyer. Uh, then on the 26th, it's open to the open. public. What are your uh, thoughts about the new Meyer? It's grocery, grocery only. I'm, I'm excited to take a look. The, one of the things that I really like about this is that some of our, our local, um, we're going to have local products in there. Yeah. So some of our local favorites will be in that Meyer. So. Yeah, I've seen Elena Campbell post on yep. social media her sprout bake. Yep. Baked goods yes. are going to be offered at Meyer. Those muffins. Uh, if you haven't tried that muffin batter yet, it's delicious. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's right. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes, um, I am as well. Nice. <laughs> and just another option for going grocery shopping in Lake Orion. Yes. And this past Friday, there was a fun event this past Friday. Um, Kids and cops uh, gather at Bland Sims Elementary School. The Lake Orient Police Department uh, hosts this event at the elementary school. And basically what they do is they invite kids to come out and they have games set up, uh, ping pong, floor hockey, um, wow. I, uh, air hockey, all sorts of stuff yeah. going on. And then, um, and there's some video there on the screen. Uh, it was so loud. <laughs> it, I, I felt like I was standing next to a jet engine as, uh, <laughs> as they were getting ramped up and ready to go. Oh, uh, but there's awesome. board games and puzzles and all sorts of stuff. Uh, earlier in the summer, uh, they have a car cruise in downtown Lake Orion, the Kids and Cops Car Cruise. And not only does that raise money for their Shop with the Hero program, but it also raises money uh, for this particular program. Uh, and they've purchased things for this program, like ping pong tables and things like that. Oh, some foosball. Uh, yeah. yeah. And at the, uh, at, near the end of the day, uh, they brought stacks and stacks of pizzas for the oh. kids to enjoy. So uh, the cops really go all out uh, to make sure the kids have a good time. And, you know, they say that they really want to build that relationship between mm -hmm. cops and kids and make it a positive experience and uh, make sure that kids aren't afraid to approach police officers. Yep. Uh, so there's two more scheduled uh, throughout the school year. And as I was wandering the halls of Blanc Sims, I was a little sad because they're going to be closing this particular building. Yep. The new school, which is located directly behind this school, is currently under construction. And uh, so this one that we are shooting video in uh, will at some point be bulldozed. Aww. The new school will uh, open its doors to students hopefully in the fall of 2023 okay. for the 23-24 yeah, school, school year. year. So I was kind of walking around soaking it all in, mm -hmm. just thinking, oh, this might be one of the last times I step foot in this school. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. That was uh, that was a really great event. Um, another big story. I know I'm excited about this. <laughs> is uh, Silver Bell Road? Have you driven on Silver Bell Road lately? Not not within the last few weeks. No. Uh, <laughs> it will do damage to your car. So I you... should stay off of it for right <laughs> you now. Is what stay you're saying? Off of it. Okay. <laughs> it is. It has been a disaster the past oh. couple of years with all the potholes and everything. 
I've been complaining to anyone who would listen. They're finally going to do something about it. All right. Orion Township has received a grant of $7 million wow. uh, from the federal government, thanks to our former rep, Alyssa Slotkin. Uh, she managed to snag some money to finally get that repaired. Um, there's some other funding that they're going to pull together to, to do that work. Unfortunately, the work won't start until 2024. Oh, so we have a whole year to another go. Another year. Yeah, so they'll be patching potholes for another year. <laughs> um, but you can look forward to the day when Silver Bell Road is going to be totally repaved. And we have this little news story uh, interview with Orient Township Supervisor Chris Barnett, who explains how this all came about. Anyone who has driven on Silver Bell Road over the past decade will agree that it's like driving on the moon. The crumbling road is heavily used by employees of the GM Orient Assembly Plant, trucks stopping by the Waste Management Landfill, and shoppers heading to Great Lakes Crossing or the retail stores located along Brown Road. If you've dodged potholes or just flat out avoided Silver Bell, well, there's good news on the horizon. Orient Township has been awarded $7 million by the U.S. House Appropriations Committee to go towards the rehabilitation of 2.6 miles of roads that include Silver Bell, Giddings, and Brown Road. When General Motors announced a $4 billion investment in the GM Orient Assembly Plan at the beginning of 2022, there was an urgency to improve the infrastructure surrounding the plant. Uh, we went to work. Um, talking to anybody that would listen to us at MDOT, at the Road Commission, state legislature, at appropriations, the governor's office, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and then in, in uh, D.C., our congressional representative, uh, Alyssa Slotkin. So uh, we kind of took our show on the road, if you will, and pitched the issue. Um, we, we're going to have this beautiful state-of-the-art automotive production facility, one of the most high-tech on planet Earth, and the infrastructure around the facility is garbage. Um, and so we are super excited that um, we were recommended. Uh, Congresswoman Slotkin received 90 community funding project requests from all the different communities that she represented. Uh, she's moving to a different district now. Um, and of that, she got to submit 15 for funding. And of the 15, we were one of the 15, we were the only one that was recommended to be fully funded. We asked for seven million, they're funding us for seven million, which is awesome. Uh, and it was by far the largest, I think more than double the next request. So, I mean, most of these requests were a couple hundred thousand, ours was seven million. So we are excited. The $7 million received from the Community Project Funding Program brings the total to over $12 million in funds to repair the roads owned and maintained by Oakland County. Township Supervisor Chris Barnett told us he's seeking additional funding to bring the total closer to $20 million. Barnett added that it's the township and the county who are responsible for maintaining the infrastructure, not the businesses themselves. These improvements are meant to lure businesses to invest in Orion Township. That was part of the incentives that were given to GM to put this $7 billion investment in the state of Michigan. So, you know, some people call it corporate welfare. I call it smart business. I mean, we were competing with other, other states for these thousands and thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in investment. And what we're giving them is the same thing we've, tax breaks we've, we've given to other uh, manufacturers in our community in the decade I've been here. Completely legal, completely above board, um, existing law that existed long before GM announced this investment. So they're getting a tax break for 12 years. Um, and they expect that the community that they're coming to is going to have the infrastructure required to support them. That's the bottom line. What about waste management? You know, a lot of people point fingers at their trucks uh, utilizing Silver Bell. Where were they? Yeah, so, so waste, we have an interesting arrangement with waste management. That we receive a percentage of the tipping fees. We receive 5% of their tipping fees. So whatever uh, revenue they generate, 5% comes back to the township. It's used for capital improvement. Those are the monies that we use to build Wildwood Amphitheater. Um, some of the facility here was funded through the waste management fee. Um, so we already do receive revenue from them outside of the regular property taxes that they pay. Um, again, I think it's um, not their job to necessarily, their job is to maintain their site, make sure they're following the laws. Um, the roads that lead up to it that they don't own, it's hard to ask a company to invest into something they don't own. The roads are owned by the county. So 
Um, they're great partners as well, and we do generate revenue from them that we use for great community projects, but roads are not one of them. The Road Commission of Oakland County will begin work on the project in 2024. The new roads will have to withstand the weight of 3,000 commercial trucks and 18,000 vehicles per day. Sewers, traffic signals, and crosswalks will be updated, and over 18,000 feet of safety paths will be created. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to visit orientownship.org for contact information. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. So looking forward to that in 2024. We'll just have to make do until then. I'm sure as I was driving up and down Silverbell <laughs> shooting that video, I probably lost some nuts and bolts on my car yeah. there on the road yeah. someplace. But, <laughs> Hubcap um, if <laughs> exactly. somewhere. <laughs> so, all right, let's change gears. We're going to jump ahead. Uh, our ONTV food drive is just weeks away. It's the first full week of February, and we have some fun-themed programming going the entire week, and we're going to be basically doing a pledge drive that week, trying to raise funds and food for Oxford Orion Fish. And from Oxford, Oxford Orient Fish joining us right now are Ron Wood and Sue Black of uh, the Fish Food Pantry. Thanks for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. So we look forward to this time of the year. Uh, we know that we selected this time of the year to do our food drive because mm -hmm. after the holidays, We've been told that donations kind of dry up a little bit until the uh, post office food drive rolls around in the spring. Mm -hmm. So we started doing this uh, food drive a number of years ago to kind of take that slow time. Uh, talk about what's happening at, at Fish uh, nowadays. Well, um, we're starting to see a uh, pretty, uh, uh, I guess, significant increase mm -hmm. in the number of client visits <clears throat> on a monthly basis. Um, the last three months, um, we uh, we averaged 151 uh, client visits during uh, 2022, 20, uh, but the last three months we were about 175 to 180. So we're mm -hmm. starting to see an uptick. Yeah. And then so far this month in January, <clears throat> we right now we have a little over 200 uh, appointments already uh, set up for the month of January. So we're starting mm -hmm. to see a, an increase, and then as increase in the client visits, we're starting to see obviously an increase in the number of pounds. Uh, uh, food leaving the leaving the pantry. Wow! So the need Definitely. is pretty great right now. What do you mm -hmm. attribute to this increase? Is it is it the uh, the inflation going up? What what do you think is causing this increase in need? I think it's I think it's a combination. One, it's obviously the increase in cost mm -hmm. because if you take a look at two years ago, what things were costing and what they're costing today, uh, especially a number of the items that we we buy on a regular basis, uh, the perishables. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that's one reason. I think the other reason is we're, we've, we're starting to feel a little bit the last couple, three months, some pe people that are coming in that have been laid off and they're looking for some, some food assistance. Yeah. So I think it's a combination of the two, a little bit of the slowing of the economy as well as the inflation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, during COVID, the usage kind of dropped a little bit and I was told because of the, the government was uh, doing the stimulus checks right. and things like that, that there wasn't as much of a need during COVID, but now all of a sudden those numbers are going up again. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for as far as donations? What will help the pantry? Um, Pretty much any type of uh, perishable food items except corn and green beans. Got enough of those, <laughs> eh? We have about 4,000 Yeah, we each. do. We're just oh, wow. <laughs> looking through those today. So, <laughs> so uh, a lot of your, uh, your canned meat products, yeah. uh, your, uh, your, your soups, your chilies, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's uh, items that are easy, quick, fairly quick to, uh, to uh, fix. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they go uh, pretty quickly off the shelves. And so those are the ones that... Um, typically, the, the nothing against, but the, uh, through the donation, food donation, we don't get as many vo donations there. Mm -hmm. So those are items that we need to go out and purchase on a on a pretty much regular basis. Sure. Okay. Yeah. People have a, a tendency to you know clean out their cupboards and go, oh, nobody's eating this. Let's donate. Right. It. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. expiration dates a problem? We check everything that comes into the pantry that's donated. We check for expiration date. If it's expired, we do not put it on our shelves, but we bag that food up, and clients are welcome to take that free of weight because all the food they shop for is weighed. Okay. So anything on our shelves is not expired. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, and really we'll expiration dates, I feel like those have only been put on in, you know, recent years and, <laughs> and things are mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily, you know, bad. Exactly. Yeah, right no, so yeah. And that's why we don't yeah. throw it away. Right, we, yes. We, uh, we let the clients know that there's past its expiration date. Yeah. It's most of it's still good. Right, yeah. But, right. Uh, but clients are more, in just in general, in their shopping, more in tune to checking the, the expiration mm -hmm. dates. And right. so uh, mm -hmm. we spend, you know, at least a couple of times a year going through all the items on the shelves just to make sure that there's yeah. not items on that's been expired. We take them off and, and, and so forth. True. But, uh, yeah. but we tag everything in our, in our warehouse when <laughs> items are expi expiring. So okay. like in 2023, we have things that are expiring February, March, April, so forth. So we take those off the shelves for the first, or off the yeah. warehouse, put them on the shelves first so that we try to not get, rotate let them, them go through. expired. Right, yeah, yeah. let them get buried yeah. in the back. But a lot of um, our clients, even you know, this morning, love those expired bags. Um, they're kind of a grab bag, you never know, getting to yeah. supplement what they already have. You know, there could be a couple boxes of mac and cheese in there, chunky soup, and yeah. they really like it. It's mm -hmm. a little bonus bag. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're like, nice. well, use what you can, share yeah. what you, you know, your family doesn't like, no. and they, yeah. they really yeah. like it. Well, you know, I was told years ago, and I keep this in mind when I donate uh, goods to, to fish. Donate what you like, what mm -hmm. you yes. eat. Well, you know, don't go, oh, nobody's eating these lima beans. Give it to fish. <laughs> exactly. Not that there's anything wrong with lima beans. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I like canned chili. I like, yeah. you know, the Chef Boyardee stuff. You know, I, mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Why not donate that stuff to fish and to give it to families that, you know, stuff that you like? Right, yes. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Now, a couple that. of years ago, uh, prior to COVID, there were some, uh, I don't want to say hoops, but for families to get involved with, your program, there was a process they had to go through. Then when COVID rolled around, you kind of kind of put those on hold and said, look, anyone who's hungry can come in and, and get food. Mm -hmm. What's the current policy right now to for a family to come in mm -hmm. and, and benefit from your services? What do they need to do? They just need to call our office and they'll just ask basic questions. We serve service Oxford, Lake Orion, Addison, and o Oakland Township. So if they call the office and they're struggling or they know someone who is struggling, they'll ask them a couple basic questions, you know, about where you live and stuff, and then they will fit them on the schedule. It's not, there's not a qualification process necessarily from a monetary standpoint, I want to say. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you need our services, then that's all we need to know. Okay. And so there's a, a certain poundage that an individual is allowed. Talk about that for an individual or a family of four. Oh, yeah. A family of four, um, they're able to come in and shop once a month and, and uh, pick up 140 pounds of food. Wow. And of that, uh, there's, uh, of that 140 pounds, 14 uh, pounds of it can be meat, and I think it's seven pounds can be uh, vegetables. We, mm -hmm. uh, every week we, uh, we have uh, onions, potatoes, bananas, apples and oranges available for our clients, so it's okay. fresh, fresh product. And mm -hmm. then, uh, then uh, as a separate item, we also have yogurt and margarine and fresh milk and bread and eggs, eggs and mm -hmm. all of that. So we, we keep those items, uh, we purchase those on a weekly basis. Okay. Yeah. Now, like, he uses, uses the phrase, you can come in and shop. You don't have to bring any cash with you. But what I love <laughs> about your building is a person can go in there and walk the aisles and select what you like. It's mm -hmm. like shopping at right. Kroger yes. or yep. Meyer. Yeah. Um, I like the way it's set up like that. Yeah, and our clients like that opportunity because when when yeah. we uh, in the initial stages of of the pandemic and and whatever we we had to shut down shopping because of uh, you're supposed to keep separate and, uh, and everything mm -hmm. that was going on, so our counts went down and then when we reinstated sh the shopping privilege, so they they come in they get a shopping cart, they go down the aisles we hit, you know we have mm -hmm. it sorted by sections, and. Uh, and each of the items, or each, yeah, each of the item, uh, there's a limit of how many uh, cans or jars or whatever that they can take. Yeah. And so within those limits, they go and they pick out what their family wants, and, and they, when they finish, then they come uh, and uh, have their cart weighed, and, and if they're when they're weight long, long, yeah. allotment, <laughs> Sue's <laughs> group, allotment, yeah. yeah, they'll uh, take care of them. Yep. And, uh, Bag it up and send them on their way. That's yeah. Great. That's awesome. Now, how do you keep those shelves stocked? What do you What do you need to keep those shelves stocked as far as the manpower volunteers? We actually, 
<laughs> we, <laughs> uh, I guess an uh, awesome group on Tuesdays. We uh, it's our, our uh, weekly shop, uh, stocking day. But uh, actually, w being all on one floor, we moved the product from the warehouse area to the, to the, uh, to the shelves. Mm -hmm. And let's say myself or somebody else will stage the crates in the areas where the, they go on the shelf. And then we have a crew of six to eight people that come in and they stock the shelves in usually about an hour, or yeah. hour and 15 minutes and, and we're, we're good to go. And then, uh, and then we get a uh, forgotten harvest comes in about 1.30, I mean 10.30 to 11 o'clock. <laughs> Hopefully not 1.30. 10.30, 11 o'clock. <laughs> we get some food from them and boom, it gets put away. And uh, it's just a very uh, efficient operation. It's yeah. um, pretty much everybody that's, that's there on Tuesdays has probably worked for a few years. Yeah. And yeah. they know what to that's do nice. and it's handled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes everything go quickly it does. and yeah. efficient, yeah. as you mentioned. Right, right, and right. I'm curious from a standpoint, of, like the monetary standpoint, to keep this, the shelves stocked, is it, does it primarily come from food donations or monetary donations or how does, how does that work? Combination. It's, yeah. Yeah. combination. <laughs> it's a combination <laughs> yeah. of the two. I mean, we, we, um, the community is truly blessed with the support by the people that live in Orion and Oxford, mm -hmm. uh, both financially and then through donations. I mean, we get a number of organizations that, that donate cash on a, on a regular basis, and we have individuals that donate cash on a regular basis. And during, during the early and middle stages of the pandemic, it was unbelievable the amount of support financially that mm -hmm. we were getting to help serve those uh, those in need in in, in uh, the areas yeah. that we serve. So, um, and then in our food drives, the one that you're going to have, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a few weeks, uh, we have a, the schools do a food drive for us. We have the uh, postal carriers do a big food drive for us. Yeah. It's it's uh, I mean it's just a true blessing the support that we get through these food drives. So mm -hmm. that's how we can do what we yeah. what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've shifted to more of a, a cash focus, which allows you to buy the perishables and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be accepting uh, food donations. We're going to have our ONTV van uh, starting uh, February 6th. It's going to be parked outside of the Orient Center, and anyone can roll up, throw bags of food in the van. <laughs> we'll collect it at the end of each day, and uh, that's going to find its way to fish eventually, too. So we will be accepting food donations, cash donations. Mm -hmm. We're going to have uh, all that set up on our website and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're really happy to help. Um, I also wanted to mention, as far as the volunteerism goes, uh, I know that the school district has service learning hours. So what a great way for students to get service learning hours is to come over to fish and help stock those shelves too. Do you get a lot of young people, scouts, students, things like that? It's kind of uh, it's a little seasonal. Um, where a lot of uh, the regulars start taking time off in the summer, you know, usually from June till mm -hmm. August, uh, we need additional help, you know, during that time. Most of the, and, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, most of the work that's done is done during the day. So right, when yeah. st with students, so it's kind of difficult for them to come in, you know, mm -hmm. during, during the school year, but we're more than so welcome the, during the summer. The big drives, I know you said uh, when you have the big drives such as the post office in the spring on a Saturday, you might need some additional volunteers for that. For that. Uh, from what I've mm -hmm. uh, picked up on the, on the internet, it looks like it's <laughs> going to be May 13th. Mm -hmm. And we usually run it in shifts of 30 people, but two, like two hour shifts. So we need a lot of people on that particular day on, on May 13th. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then, of course, and the holidays, a lot of food drives over the holidays. Too. Yes. Right. We so so I, I have a question. So mm -hmm. obviously we're going to we're going to focus on the monetary donations because you do need to keep those weekly, you know, the fresh foods coming mm -hmm. in. Yeah. But if someone wanted to donate the, the stock items, do you have like maybe a top three or top couple of items that you know, you go through quite frequently, that would be great to see plenty of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's my wish uh, list? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably the top three, th this time of year, it's, it's your soup, your chunky soup, your progresso okay. soup, uh, a little bit of uh, chicken noodle, um, the, uh, the chili, yep. okay. um, your beef stew, um, uh, those, those are real okay. popular area uh, that we need um, mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. And, um, Keep your you get, tummy warm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. you know, it's quick, hearty meal. Yeah, yes, quick it's comfort. Easy to yeah. fix. Yeah. A when meal, you a full meal in, in a can. Right? Exactly. So, for right. your kids. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other thing is, I mean, uh, 
and this is ongoing, but we, we do go through a fair amount of cereal on a regular okay. basis. Well, so sure we do. try to um, make, make sure that area is, is stocked. And we, uh, we actually have one of our volunteers that's excellent. She finds all the deals <laughs> on, on the she cereal really to is. stretch that dollar as yeah. much as yeah. she can. And, that's great. And uh, um, so we keep our, our, our um, cereal area pretty well stocked. Yeah. That's great. As we wrap things up, if you visit their website, oxfordorianfish.org, mm -hmm. a lot of those items are listed on their homepage. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. other contact information and needs and hours of uh, volunteering and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. visit the website, oxfordorianfish.org. Mm -hmm. You can give them a call, 248-628-3933 for more information. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have more information a little bit later about uh, how you can get involved with our food drive. Before I forget, I just want to admit, Make everyone aware that we do have a drop box behind our pantry, yes. and and so if we're not somebody's not there or whatever, you can put it in that drop box that's right mm -hmm. behind the building, and it's used quite a bit now. But but for those that want to make donations, it's there 24/7. We're accepting okay. food donations now here at the Orient Center. I believe the post office accepts donations. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of places where if you think you might be away on. Uh, February 6th through the uh, 11th, uh, you can drop off food ahead of time uh, at any of those locations. Thanks for coming down right. and chatting with yeah. us. We're really thank looking you. forward to the food drive and, and helping you out. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. All Appreciate right. it. And speaking of fish, we uh, put together a video last year for our food drive to kind of give you an idea of what's going on uh, over at their pantry in Oxford. Uh, there's a heavy uh, COVID presence in this video because <laughs> yeah. it was last year, but uh, we'll, we'll update that. Um, <laughs> but here's a look at uh, what's happening at fish on a, on a regular basis. For almost 50 years, Oxford Orient Fish has been right. serving those Thank in need you. in Oxford, Thank Lake you. Orient, Addison, and Oakland Township. In 2019, fish experienced record numbers with 187 family visits per month, almost 5,000 individuals served, and over 200,000 pounds of food going out the door. Then in 2020, fish was rocked by the COVID-19 pandemic. The food pantry was forced to make changes to protect its volunteers and clients, including offering drive-up service. Initially, we had curbside. That was the only way that we were able to take care of everybody. And thank our biggest donor during that was Gleaners because the stores didn't have any products. So without Gleaners, we would have not been able to service this community. And then as of July, we have reopened and we've gone back to normal operations. With COVID protocols in place, we have families that can come every 15 minutes. We limit the people that can come into the pantry at any one time. Everybody has masks on. So we're really following the safety protocols that we, you know, we have in place. But it's just been nice for the clients to be able to come back and shop to get what they need. It was a little difficult for them because we just had prepackaged boxes. It was curbside. And we would let them pick out a few items, but it was really just kind of a volume getting everybody in and out. So now we're really trying to resume normal operations in a safe manner. Since the holidays, the traffic has definitely increased. November was a very full pantry, December. In those two months, we typically do see an uptick in clients because we always have you know, little incentives and little extras for the holidays. But honestly, this month is the first time that we've opened up another shift that's gonna be starting next week because the volume of clients, it's tremendous. Um, I haven't seen this big of a surge since prior to COVID. We're here and we have the product, so we'd like the people to come, but by if they, if they don't need us, we certainly understand that we're happy for them. But our main concern is, you know, making sure, especially with kids, we want to make sure the kids are well taken care of. We don't want any child going to school, being hungry, or not having anything. Our biggest need right now, I would say, probably is chicken that we're having the most difficulty with. And then just really cash donations are the best thing because we're able to purchase things through the business to business with Meyer and also with Gleaners. So then therefore we're, you know, we can stretch that dollar a lot farther than we can an actual donation. And then as far as food drives, we have not had the postal food drive due to COVID the last couple of years. We did have a wonderful food drive at the holidays from the schools and they, they did a phenomenal job. So that was, that was very helpful. What qualification does a family have to meet to be able to take advantage of these services? Just need. I mean, we don't have any restrictions. Before we always had restrictions for everybody, but now all they have to do is call us and we make it, we make it work. We make it work somehow. They can come in. 
The ONTV food drive is just such a wonderful gift. It's kind of that blessing after the holidays when everything is low and you kind of come in and step up and then not only that, you really put it out there so that we get that, you know, the notice from the community. And just as a benefit from your on TV, we've then had people that have stepped up with Chris Barnett and, you know, out in Orion and then therefore we have more people that will come in and want to adopt a shelf. So the, the ONTV food drive has really been such a blessing in a multitude of ways. And really the last two years, it's just been overwhelming. Thank you. <laughs> just thank you from all our, from our heart. Thank everybody that helps us in any way they can. And to people that need it, please call us and please come in. We're here to help. So we're looking forward to the big food drive coming up the first full week of February. We hope you're going to uh, chip in and help out and help us break records. I think our goal is $5,000 we want to raise this year. Um, I think we're having a bit of an issue. Dorian, can you come up here for a second? Uh, someone is having a birthday here today. <laughs> so we wanted to wish you a happy birthday and thank, thank you, you for you everything guys. you do and here's Tracy here. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, you. happy birthday, birthday dear happy birthday, 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 birthday to you, you. Oh, thank we you. had to oh. trick you to get you out of here <laughs> Awesome. Happy birthday. Happy Thanks birthday. Thanks for everything. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's see. After that, uh, we're going to throw it to the North Oakland uh, Concert Band. We recently recorded them, uh, their symphonic uh, band. So let's right. take a look at this little musical interlude.
That was the always great North Oakland concert band. Uh, that was at the high school. Uh, we've had them here in this building performing, so you can see them all over town. Yeah, that was great. So are, uh, are you watching and enjoying the NFL playoffs? I am, yes. <laughs> it was a pretty good slate of games this past weekend. It's been it's been great. I, yeah. I, I have to say, this season, the NFL has not disappointed. It's, yeah. Uh, there have been some exciting games, some upsets, lots of surprises, yeah. and uh, it's been fun to watch. That Chargers game was unbelievable. I oh. mean, to, to you know, approach <laughs> halftime with yeah. a 27 point lead, and then they only scored three points in the second half and ended up losing. You want to say typical Chargers, they always seem oh. to find a way to lose a game late. It was just frustrating because that just basically sealed, you know, the Lions not making it into the. Are you talking about last? Well, this week? is the or playoff the, game. Yeah, the yeah, playoff yeah. game. They they yeah. had a huge lead. I thought they were going to oh, advance, yeah, that but was, yep, no, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was something. And uh, I, what's your prediction? Who do you think is going to play in the Super Bowl? Oh, in the Super Bowl. I mean, I feel like the Bills have a lot of momentum with everything that happened recently around DeMar Hamlin, and I just yeah. feel like they just have that extra fire, um, you know, with that. Um, I'm also, I, I'm liking the Cowboys, too. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm not sure if it would be Bills, Cowboys, but, but those are two that I have my eye on. So I'm going with, uh, in the AFC, I'm thinking the Chiefs. Uh, they're the number one seed. They had a bye week this past weekend, so they're going to be playing for the first time this weekend. They're going to be fresh. They're taking on Jacksonville, who are the ones that had that spectacular come from behind one against the Chargers. But I don't think Jacksonville's going to have the same success against the Chiefs. The Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, are tough, tough to beat. On the other side, on the uh, NFC, uh, I got to go with the Niners. I, the Niners yeah. absolutely destroyed Seattle um, and looked really good. But, of course, the Cowboys destroyed the Buccaneers on Monday Night Football. Um, my problem with the Cowboys is they call themselves America's team, and uh, I didn't vote for them. So uh, I think that's pretentious to call yourself America's team. So I'm going with uh, Chiefs and Niners in Chiefs the Super Niners. Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll, we'll see as the, the weeks unravel what, uh, what happens. All right. We'll make so. a little bet during this uh, next break. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to segue to our local sports update, uh, courtesy of Joey Tysick. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we are back from the holiday break to catch up on the winter sports season. Today we'll cover girls basketball, boys basketball, and hockey. The varsity girls basketball team started the season 6-1 and one, and now is coming off the winter break and are looking to continue their winning ways as they look towards the final stretch of the season and prepare for the playoffs. In their first game back, they traveled to Southfield on January 5th to take on the Warriors of a and they would take care of business and win 53 to 38. The following day, they would have a home game on January 6th against the Holly Broncos. Lake Orion really brought out their tough defense and didn't allow Holly to do anything. They would have a huge win 66 to 10 over the Broncos. Then on January 10th, they would get another home game, this time against the tough Stony Creek team. Now Stony Creek is in the OAA red so you know it's going to be a tough game, but these Dragons are much tougher than their division may suggest. And Bob Bridges always gives his team the confidence to go out and win any game. The Dragons responded and did just that as they beat the Cougars 53-45. The impressive part was that the Dragons were down early, but were able to claw back into the game and win even though they didn't have the lead until late in the fourth quarter. Matty Ebert led the Dragons with 15, and Audrey Wishmeyer had 14 on the night for Lake Orion. And finally, on January 16th, the Dragons traveled to West Bloomfield for the Laker MLK Classic to play the number one ranked team in Detroit Renaissance. This was a great test for Lake Orion, and they fought hard. At halftime, Renaissance led 26-24, but the Dragons just could not keep up in the second half as the Phoenix shot 50% from the field. Seven different players scored for the Dragons, but they just couldn't overcome the deficit. Still, a great showing for the Dragons, which will definitely give them great experience moving forward. The Dragons now sit at 9-2 on the season and will finish the month off with some tough non-league games against West Bloomfield, Clarkson, and Oxford. The varsity boys basketball team has had a great start to their season as they were 3-2 at the break with a close loss to Clarkson and a loss to Rochester Adams. 
On Thursday, January 5th, the Dragons welcomed in the Royal Oak Ravens into the Dragon Fieldhouse. The Dragons were able to capitalize on the Ravens' turnovers, and Royal Oak just seemed to be a bit jittery in this game. Maybe not fully prepared coming off the break, but Lake Orion did not allow themselves to do the same mistakes. Lake Orion pushed the tempo and had great spacing on the floor to get good looks at the basket. The following week, the Dragons took on the Stony Creek Cougars at home, and this was a runaway from the tip. Stony Creek just couldn't keep up after Lake Orion put up 27 points in the first quarter. They slowed down in the second, but only just a little. The halftime score was 39-18. The second half was a lot of the same as Stony Creek just couldn't get the offense going as they would fall to the Dragons 72-30. A couple days later on January 12th, the Dragons would face off against crosstown rival Oxford once again at their Dragon Fieldhouse. Lake Orion was able to beat the Wildcats earlier in the game, but coming into this game, the Wildcats were on a five-game winning streak. The first quarter started close as neither team could break away. Through most of the second, it was more of the same until late in the second quarter, the Dragons were able to get a bit of a lead as they would head into the halftime up 21-15. At the start of the second half, the Wildcats were able to make a bit of a run, but the Dragons responded well and made a run of their own after DJ Morrow had nine points in the third to give the Dragons a 36-24 lead going into the final quarter. Lake Orion came out hot in the start of the fourth quarter and Oxford was unable to respond. The Dragons would win the game handily 53-32. Lake Orion now sits at 6-2 with many league opponents coming up. This will be a good way to finish out the month as they try and improve their lead in the OAA White. The Lake Orion hockey team has been playing well this year as they went into the winter break sitting at 5-4-1 with many of those losses coming at the start of the season with all of their out-of-league matches. Coming out of the break, Lake Orion has plenty of league matches and a few tough tournaments to play in. On January 5th, they played Gross Point South at Detroit Skating Club and would win 5-2. Then, two days later, on the 7th, they would welcome Bloomfield Hills, who also plays their home games at Detroit Skating Club. Lake Orion would somehow beat the Blackhawks for the second time in a month, with the final score being 7-3. The exact same score from the last matchup. Then, this past weekend, Lake Orion competed in the North-South Showcase. In their first game, they would beat a tough Traverse City Central team 3-2. The following day, they would then face off against Byron Center, one of the best teams in the state. Unfortunately, Lake Orion had no answers for them and would lose the game 0-7. Then on MLK Day, the Dragons traveled out to Mount Clemens Ice Arena for the MAC Showcase, where they would play Romeo. Lake Orion was able to bounce back from the Byron Center loss and beat the Bulldogs 5-1. Lake Orion now looks to start their push towards the state tournament as they will play plenty of league games as well as a couple more showcases and tournaments. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. We'll see you next time. All right, lots of exciting action uh, over at the high school uh, sports. We try to cover as many different sports as we can here at ON TV. It's a little something for everybody. Yes. So um, with the new year just getting underway, do you have any uh, plans this year, any resolutions, anything you're looking forward to doing this year? Oh, resolutions. Um, you know, I, I think this is my year to get back into shape. Yeah? <laughs> like it's, you know, I yeah, I, I think there's been I, – I stopped playing pickup basketball a few years ago, and – you know, that kind of changed things, and now I'm playing pickleball, and mm. so I'm going to eat a little cleaner, and that's that's my, I'm saying it on camera, so I guess I have to stick to it, right? <laughs> now explain pickleball a little yeah. bit. Is it like wooden paddles? Well, it started off originally with wooden paddles, mm -hmm. but nobody who like really plays has a wooden paddle you so have, what's like, your racket the, like the it, it's a paddle but it's like the, the the graphite and the honeycomb and like there's okay. all different kinds of materials but uh but you have a, a paddle it's like a bigger than a ping pong paddle and you stand on a court that is it's kind of a cross between tennis and table tennis but you're standing on the table okay so so there's a net and there's there's okay. a net and there's a wiffle ball and uh, ah. it can be quite competitive. So I actually played this morning up at the Cirque building. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, I burned a lot of calories this morning. So that so. wiffle ball, you can make it do some crazy you things, right? You can make right? it do That's all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, you get some different shots in and uh, 
Yeah. It's, Interesting. It's fun. Right. It's fun and challenging. So I think I've, I found my replacement for basketball. There so, you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't do as much traveling as I was hoping to last year. I did uh, in the spring last year. I did do my uh, usual trek to L.A., which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Hoping to get back to L.A. Uh, this year. What I'm, what I'm thinking of doing, I've never been to San Francisco and I had some friends that just recently did this. I might do the same thing. I might fly to San Francisco, spend a day or so in San Francisco, then get a rental car and drive down Pacific Coast Highway along the coast through Malibu and then spend uh, a week or so in L.A. So yeah. that's kind of my goal this year. I is think to you should do, do it. Like if you yeah. haven't been to San Francisco, I think you have you have to go. Yeah, so, so that's a Ghirardelli bucket Square list thing. And, um, yes, I got uh, pictures of myself in front of all kinds of landmarks across the country, and the Golden mm -hmm. Gate Bridge is the one that's eluded me. So I want to see the Golden Gate Bridge, go to Alcatraz. Lombard um, Street. Yeah, yes, and the that. Full House House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big tourist yeah. attraction in San yes. Francisco. So that's one of my goals uh, this year. But yeah, I definitely want to travel uh, more this year. That's something I really enjoy doing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you plan on getting away this year? Um, I don't have any big plans this year, so I, I'm not sure. I, I always enjoy a nice beach vacation. Yeah. Something relaxing, like the opposite of what everyday life is. So. Yeah. See, people say that to me. They're like, well, don't you want to go to the Bahamas or something tropical? I'm like, no, I like, I like bustling. I like going to the studios yeah. and all the tourist attractions and the museums. I like yeah. bustle, bustle, busy, busy, busy. Yeah. So. I, I guess that's my everyday life is bustle, bustle, busy, <laughs> busy. So for vacation, I like to relax. And I have some, some family. I have a cousin in Naples, Florida. So that's always a nice place to go and oh, yeah. visit and relax and hang out. Yeah, yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah. I know California's been getting a ton of rain uh, the past couple of weeks, and uh, hopefully that's going to be coming to an end soon. But I saw something recently. It's like, can they somehow harness this rain to get them through those drought periods? Like, right, right. what can you do to all this rainfall to utilize it the rest of the it's year? Like it's like that so all much. or nothing concept, yeah. you know? So yeah, yeah. So hopefully they can get that figured out. So um, if you don't get a chance to get away and you're uh, going to stay around Lake Orion, there's all kinds of fun uh, upcoming events uh, for you to do uh, locally. So here's uh, this week's quick hits to give you some ideas of what's happening here in Lake Orion. The Lake Orion DDA is hosting a photography and art contest. Submit your photos, drawings, paintings, or models of downtown Lake Orion by using hashtag ExperienceLakeOrion and hashtag LocalLens on Facebook or Instagram, or email them to events at downtownlakeorion.org. The contest runs now through January 28th. The Orion Library book sale continues on Saturday with Bag Day. Come browse the thousands of books available for sale and get a bag full of books for only $5. The sale will run from 9.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. The bags are supplied by the library. On Saturday, the Orion Library will be hosting a Lunar New Year Crafts Workshop for grades K-5 through from 2 to 3 p.m. 2023 is the year of the rabbit. Discover your lunar zodiac animal and celebrate the Lunar New Year with crafts. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. The Wint Nature Center will be hosting an Owl Moon Hike on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Meet at the Nature Center to learn facts from fiction about owl anatomy and then hit the trail for an after dark hike. This program is suitable for ages 6 and up. Register by calling 248 858 0916. ONTV's 13th annual food drive is just around the corner. The drive begins on February 6th and runs through the 10th. The food drive benefits the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Help us reach our goal of $5,000 by donating today at orionontv.org. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for cloudy skies with a high of 39 and a low of 33. Rain on Thursday with a high of 46 and a low of 31. Cloudy on Friday with a high of 33 and a low of 27. Cloudy again on Saturday with a high of 33 and a low of 28. And partly cloudy skies on Sunday with a high of 35 and a low of 28. That's it for this week's ONTV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. So 
a lot's going on here yes. in Lake Orion. Our food drive is right around the corner. Uh, something else that's going to be coming up in a few weeks that I'll be out covering, and this is, I think, one of the craziest events that I cover throughout the year is the Ice Cup Golf Challenge. Are you familiar with this? I am, yeah. <laughs> so it's the Rotary Club, the Club Lake Orion Rotary. They get avid golfers to come out. I, I want to say it's the first weekend in February uh, where they actually have holes in, in the ice, on the lake, in the park, in downtown Lake Orion, and golfers can golf nine holes mm -hmm. in downtown Lake Orion, and it is crazy. Yeah. I, I can't imagine going out in the bitter cold and golfing. Are, are you an avid golfer? I am not or? an avid golfer. I am. A, I can get through like a scramble golfer, but uh, but I've I've been down. I haven't participated in the full event, but I've been down for yeah. downtown for that, and it's a lot of fun to watch. And the different holes there's different like depending on who's sponsoring the hole you there's some great food and um it's it's just a really fun festive atmosphere yeah so. one of the holes is there's a there's a building on lapeer road right next to pelton's point in the lake over there and you you go up the elevator to the to the deck that they have there the patio and they give you a slingshot and you have to shoot your golf ball to a hole that's down below uh and that's pretty crazy have and you ever participated in the event or are you always i'm uh, always shooting it? video yeah, yeah. so uh, unless i strap a gopro to my head <laughs> now that um, hey that could be uh, <laughs> that could be fun to see <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty crazy it's pretty wild uh yeah. probably the only thing more wild than that is is the uh, resolution run on new year's day yes. now normally i shoot video of the resolution run and, and we would have played video today but I, I got up early on the morning of New Year's Day I went to downtown Lake Orion and it was pouring rain and so I asked the organizers are, are you gonna do this and they said rain or shine and I'm like well I can't bring my camera out in the pouring rain so I yeah. sat in my car waiting for it to stop and then the snow came and <laughs> for about an hour it was just a heavy wet snow and the pavement was slushy and wet and messy and I'm like who is going to <laughs> run in this stuff and I, I made a call and turn the key and drove home. <laughs> I don't know who's running on the morning of New Year's Day in this mess. I don't know what kind of turnout they had, but. I don't either because the the, um, the path goes actually past my house. Yeah. And normally you can hear all of the noise and I heard nothing. I, I mean, I was still sleeping at that time. Though, yeah. So, <laughs> but I, I heard nothing this year. I so. overheard one mom and her daughter go, well, this is going to be fun. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, they're not going to do it. So unfortunately, just for about an hour, they had terrible, terrible weather. If they would have pushed it back an hour, they would have had nice weather to run in. But yeah. I'm like, I can't bring my gear out when it's just heavy rain. I can't do that. Well, so. there were people who persevered through it. So. That's right. They'll run in just about anything. So. Yeah, and they have a great story now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, this month's edition of Orion Today. We're going to take a little break. Uh, normally, we would be back in two weeks, but that's going to be butting right up against our food drive. So uh, be sure to tune in for our food drive the first full week of February. Uh, we're going to have special programming. A lot of ONTV staff are going to be doing cooking and recipes. And Jimmy Johnson, uh, who is uh, a member of the Orient Chamber and a local businessman, he's going to do a history segment with me. And uh, we're going to be talking about sports and local news and all sorts of stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And again, we're hoping to break our record. Uh, our goal is $5,000. Last year, I think we raised close to 7,500, I think. So we're hoping for more of the same uh, this year. So uh, we'll have more information. Visit our website, orionontv.org for more information. And uh, uh, we'd love to see you help out on our food drive. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, just, just the food drive. Tune in and if you can donate this year, that would be fantastic. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me again. Thank and you, Joe. We will see you next time on Orion Today.